For thousands of years, people have been fascinated by patterns. And even if we just look at the world around us, we'll start to realize that patterns are just about everywhere. From the bricks in the sidewalk to the plants in your garden, the structure of the home you live in and the fields you drive by. Patterns are one of the many places where nature and art intersect. And patterns are as old as the world itself. Join us today as we talk about patterns in nature. Welcome to Ned Talks. Patterns in nature can range from being very simple to very complex, and so we're going to start out with looking at a very basic type of pattern in nature, symmetry. So there are two types of symmetry, bilateral and radial symmetry. Bilateral basically means two halves, and a really good way to demonstrate this is by looking at a tulip poplar leaf. So this leaf has a vein that runs straight up through the middle, and that vein happens to be the line of symmetry for this leaf. So what that means, this leaf being bilaterally symmetrical, is that if we fold the leaf in half, both of those sides will mirror each other. Radial symmetry is the type of symmetry we find in round objects. So if we think about a round nut from a tree or a sea urchin or another round organism, that line of symmetry can be drawn anywhere across that organism, and as long as that line of symmetry intersects the dead center of that object, wherever you draw that line, that object will be symmetrical. Fractals are another type of pattern that, like symmetry, can be found just about anywhere. Fractals are patterns that are made up of repeating units at a different scale, and the perfect example to demonstrate a fractal is a fern. If we take a look at this frond, or leaf of a fern, we're going to notice that it's kind of generally in this triangular shape, right? Well, if we take that triangular shape and break it down, each leaflet is in that triangular shape as well, and breaking it down even further, each sub-leaflet is in that triangular shape. So this is a perfect example of a fractal. That same basic shape repeated on different scales. Fractals are such an interesting pattern in nature, and in particular, there has been a lot of research by psychologists into the pleasing effect of these fractals. So they are very pleasing and mesmerizing to look at, and it's been shown that looking at fractals can actually reduce stress. Stripes and spots are patterns that are present for a variety of different reasons in nature, but we're most readily probably going to find them on insects and animals. A lot of times they serve to help break up the outline of that animal or to help that animal blend into its surroundings. Cracks can bring on a sense of tension. Out in the world, we normally find cracks when objects are put under pressure. For objects that are flexible, those cracks normally form from a single point and spread out from there. But objects that are not flexible, those cracks run in straight lines 90 degrees from each other. Flows and meanders might be seen in the path that a creek takes through a forest. Another example of a meander might be the channels that a burrowing beetle makes on the underside of tree bark, or the path that a vine might take as it grows up a tree. Chaos or disorder can be thought of as perhaps the lack of a pattern. This might be seen in the splash of water onto a surface or the random distribution of plants along a forest floor. Tessellations are repeating patterns of shapes or tiles across a surface, and a great example of a tessellation can be seen in our beehive. On each frame of the beehive, the cells that the bee create are all a hexagon shape, and there is multiple cells across the entire frame. But the tiles in a tessellation don't exactly have to be the same shape. We can find tessellations elsewhere out in nature, such as the scales on an eastern garter snake, or the plate-like bark of a black cherry tree. The different types of patterns in nature don't have to be isolated, and oftentimes we can find these patterns together. If we take a look at a leaf from this Norway maple up behind me, uh, we'll notice a couple different patterns working together. 
The first thing we'll notice is the fractal that the leaf forms. The veins through the leaf form a similar pattern to the distribution of the leaves on the branch and perhaps to the branches on the tree. The second thing we'll notice is the spots on this leaf. This is tar spot, a fungus that grows on these leaves and they're in the form of spots. And the third thing we'll notice is that the distribution of those spots on the leaf is random, so there's a sense of disorder. Patterns in nature have been helping us to understand how the world is organized, and they've been inspiring artists and artwork for thousands of years. So we would like to propose a challenge to you. Take a walk outside and explore and find some of these patterns in nature, draw up some inspiration, and then dig out those colored pencils and paints and create a piece of art for your own. Feel free to share it with us using the hashtag Ned Smith Center, and we would love to see what you come up with. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.